Hey gang, welcome back. Got a Taylor guitar here. This is a baritone 8 string. The owner contacted me about getting some side ports put into his guitars. He's been faced with the really discouraging diagnosis that he's losing his hearing. He's already lost quite a bit of it, and it's to an untreatable condition which will eventually render him completely deaf. And, I mean, that's devastating, you can imagine. Um, to that end, he wants to know about, you know, having the side ports put in here to try to get as much air coming his way so he can enjoy his guitars uh, while he still can for as long as he can. So this should be an interesting project. The guitar has this really nice oval access plate here on the bottom for the battery uh, for the preamp system. And he saw that and thought that would be an excellent shape to mimic for the sound port, and it's just about the right size. I agreed. So I'm pulling out the battery here. It would be nice if I could get rid of that uh, strap button, but it's one of these models that's pretty much integral with the preamp, so it's going to be difficult to take off. I made a little hole here in my tracing paper, and um, I'll tape that down, and I'll basically do a rubbing to get that oval shape, and we can transfer that on to the template. Okay, there's an EQ and a preamp in there and wires running just about where we want the hole to be. So the first job is going to be to get those out of the way, if we can. Okay. Yeah, there's a clip still in there I've got to get out. There we go. I'm going to cover over that label and just tape a paper towel over it. And I'm going to see if I can find something to sort of enshroud that electronics package. They're not that easy to get out. And at the same time, I don't want a whole bunch of dust in there if I can help it. Maybe a little Ziploc bag or something. We can tape it up over it. The other thing I'm going to do is tape off the kerf lining in here in the area of the side patch, as much of it as I can. This has every opportunity to be a really messy sort of job, so I want to get as clean a result as possible. So, lots of masking. I glued up some veneers for the interior side support. And I got a little bit rambunctious with the glue there. Here's my interior support. It's a three-piece cross-grain lamination of black dyed veneers. But it's about a sixteenth of an inch thick. The outside veneers are running in this direction. Uh, perpendicular to the grain of the sides and you can see I've cut it to shape it fits between the top and bottom linings I'm going to be gluing this in using epoxy which is something I don't use a whole lot of in repair work because usually you do a repair you want to make sure it can be undone at a future date if something goes wrong uh, in this case because we're cutting a big hole in the side that's not an issue I don't mind using epoxy here and um, you know it's got good gap filling capabilities and uh, because it's difficult to mate these two surfaces together I'm going to be clamping them using a whole bunch of magnets inside and out to hold it in place um, as you can see I've taped everything off I want no chance of getting epoxy on the top anywhere and you also have to sort of rehearse your movements to see exactly what you got to do to get it in position when the time comes I'll be wearing gloves and everything to make sure I get the support in the right place I've got a magnet running through that'll act as a positive stop for the leading edge of it. There's also a piece of tape on the other side, so I've got a good visual cue to know that I'm, I'm in the right location. I'm using 5-minute epoxy, and as it starts to set up, I'm just going along to each pair of magnets here, pushing them together, making sure we've got good contact all the way along. Now the Ramirez happens to have a side support right in the place where we want to put the hole. So I'm going to have to get in there with some small tools and peel that out, and make way for my own side support. One of the things about guitar repair is, you know, as soon as you leave the basics of setup behind, you're constantly building jigs. You're always making something that'll help you do a job. And you can try your best to make them sort of universal, but at the end of the day, the next job that comes along is going to require something standalone and, and unique. So it's good to have a set of like jig parts kicking around. I use quarter 20 hardware insert nuts, bolts and such, because you're always building something. I'm padding the jaws of the jig that'll contact the top and back of the guitar with cork, just using some contact adhesive for that. Okay, so we've got some positioning marks here. Finish the jig. I drilled and used an oscillating spindle sander to make the ellipse. The quarter 20 bolts in the inserts allow me to shift back and forth to make sure I'm on center. 
and of course we got those padded calls on either side. I will also use quick grip clamp just to make sure that uh, it's absolutely not going to move while it's routing. Uh, I don't want to put a whole lot of pressure on it but I want to make sure it's very good and secure. I'm using my egg beater drill because I want to sneak up on this. I don't want to go crashing through and uh, I want to be pretty gentle. I'm using my tapered cello reamer here to enlarge the hole, make it big enough to fit my half inch template following drill bit. I want a bit of clearance around the bit when I turn the router on so that uh, it's not going to bounce off the side walls of the, the hole and possibly jump and damage something. The urethane finish used in these guitars is kind of prone to cracking if you leave it at right angles or you cut through it. So I'm just gently rounding over the edges just a little bit. A couple of coats of shellac will seal the exposed wood and give it some shine. There we go. Certainly makes it a lot easier to get those lost picks out. And you can see all the neat stuff inside. Nice. I like this thing. Um, as far as the actual effect of the sound port, is it louder? It's hard to tell because this is actually a pretty loud instrument to begin with. Um, am I noticing a little bit more presence? Yes, I think so. To me, the effect of these is always sort of subtle. It's not like you're getting a hit in the face with a lot of air, but it is definitely sort of enveloping me with a bit more atmosphere. Nice. the effect's actually more present in the classical. I'm definitely feeling like there's more coming towards me. Anyhow, thanks for watching. See you again soon.